welcome back to the channel everybody i am mick alphanim i hope you guys saw that video the other day and pay close attention to when the bank of england told everybody that during these types of times that uh these times of strife and struggle that the crypto that survives this uh this this very very coarse period that survives regulation when there's regulatory clarity that comes down those crypto that survive that time period are going to become like the Amazons of the future. That's big money. So even the Bank of England is telling you that. So now, when the Bank of England is speaking, as I said in the video yesterday, just in case some of you didn't see, um, they're talking primarily about the crypto that are compliant and that they work closely, closely with. That would be who? Who sits on the Digital Pound Foundation? That's XRP. That's Quant, okay? Maybe a few others will, will join. I think there might be a few others in there, but those are the ones I know about. XRP, Ripple, and Quant, um, who are in deep with the Bank of England and so many other banks. But we'll get to that in a little bit here. But we have an article here on CoinQuora.com. Head over there, check them out. They're doing a good job. And the, the article is titled, What to Expect from XRP Price When Jed McCaleb's Dumping Ends. So, Jed McCaleb is coming to the end of his holdings of XRP, which I think is a great thing. Um, of course, when you're not dumping millions and billions of XRP on the market, obviously that can help push the price down a little bit, right? Um, so you won't have that, uh, that, 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 that pushing down of the price any, any longer. So there can be consolidation, but then there's also the, the ability, unless there's another huge dump we don't know about coming from somewhere else, there's the possibility of XRP going up in price since there's so many uh, people accumulating XRP, so the price could go up a little bit, which is good psychologically for holders of XRP. You know, a, a lot of what goes on in both the stock market and crypto is, is completely psychological. That's why you have to be careful what you subject yourself to. Um, and a lot of people get down, they get depressed, because of watching certain negative catalysts, because of watching the charts during a, a, a very red, bloody period, um, a time period. And so they become depressed, they want to sell. There's a lot of psychological pressure and not everybody, unfortunately, is, is strong mentally, right? So, but this is one less negative catalyst that will affect both XRP holders, a lot of them, and also affect the price of XRP. So. Things are always getting better for XRP holders, right? Um, but let's just read this little tidbit here. So Jeb McCaleb was a part of payment giant Ripple's founding team in 2012. We all know this. McCaleb's eight year long. Well, we don't really need his background. We know all about Jed, don't we? <laughs> Says at the current rate, McCaleb can offload his XRP holdings as early as the end of July. So this is it. The end of a dumping era. The XRP army is awaiting the end of dumping the dumping marathon as it is believed that McCaleb's XRP sale has increased sell selling pressure on the altcoin. Keep in mind also, it could have been worse because I believe his original idea was to dump everything all at once. Ripple had the fears that he was going to dump all at once. And so they entered to like a, a, a deal or something with him so that he would only do a little bit, a little bit at a time. So to be fair, it could have been much worse, but you know, but then again, there's another way to look at that because we could have gotten it over with, right? You just have one massive dump, we could have gotten it over with, but that would have been very, very bad for what Ripple was trying to do at the time. You need XRP, look, Ripple funds most uh, most of his projects. I wouldn't I want to say all of them, but I'll just say most of his projects with liquidated XRP. So they bring in XRP, sometimes escrow, sometimes they use some of that XRP to fund certain things that they want to do. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the business deals that they make, right? They're flying here and there. They, they run their business off of XRP money. Um, so that price has to be up. So like I said, Ripple has a vested interest on that price of XRP going up. So you don't want this guy dumping a massive amount of XRP on the market. It pushes that money down. Now your money has decreased because of what this individual has done. So I think it was smart to allow him to do it little by little, right? Uh, give or take, you know, <laughs> negative result here or there, but it's much less of an impact than having it happen all at once. So this will be a good thing in my humble opinion. Let's move on to this next article. Here, there's always so much happening with XRP and Ripple. They keep it interesting, and it all has been very, very good uh, as of late, in my humble opinion. This is on thecryptoglobe.com, and it goes as such. Ripple's Brook, Brooks Inc. and Swizzle, wintertime is actually a fabulous time to build businesses. 
Let's scroll down here. It says Brooks and Swizzle, SVP of Global Cons Customer Acts, uh, Success. It says Brooks and Swizzle, SVP of Global Customer Success and the Managing Director of APAC and MENA at Ripple talked about crypto winter on day two uh, of the two week long 2022 Aspen Ideas Festival being held in Aspen, Colorado. Before joining Ripple in 2021, Enswistle served as Chief Business Officer of International for Uber, responsible for business development in the firm's relationships across Asia Pacific, uh, uh, EMEA, and Latin America. His comments were made at an AIF panel, highlights uh, of which were featured on CNBC's Crypto World. So yes, I do agree with him. Times like this is, is great to build a business. Um, it's great for accumulation of crypto. If that's something that you're into and you feel like you don't have enough, it's a great time to accumulate before the next bull run. Bull runs will come again. They will. And they will be massive because the crypto industry is growing bigger. You see, Ripple has not stopped expanding. Algorand has not stopped expanding. So I'm only speaking about the bank coins, but the bank coins have not stopped their expansion. As a matter of fact, some of the bank coins are hiring more workers to expand even more. You saw a Ripple XRP just hire some people. Um, they're trying to hire some more people for their Toronto headquarters. I think they're hiring some more people for Europe as well. I think Algorand was doing the same. You saw earlier this year, Stellar was hiring more, more uh, uh, workers as well. So the bank coins continue to expand because they have these potent partnerships. They have partnerships with governments, banks, uh, large business institutions. So the next time we see a bull run, the our bank coin uh, uh, blockchains have grown exponentially already. We just are not seeing it reflected in the price as of yet. But once we have another bull run or we have regulatory clarity or we have any major catalyst, those prices can skyrocket skyrocket to a much higher place than where they were before, just based on the logic of they have expanded their partnerships, they have expanded their reach, they have expanded their corridors. Everything has grown, right? We even see security increasing. Everything, they, they've been proven on everything. We even see security increasing. I believe XRP did a security upgrade some months back. Um, you have XDC has military grade security now. I believe XLM had increased their security. Um, I'm trying to remember, I believe Hedera did something also. Hedera increased their security, but they always they have always been very, very secure. Um, so everything has improved, which theoretically, theoretically, no guarantees, of course, means that there is the potentiality for more money in another bull run, right? Um, so I do agree with that. It, it's a good time to build businesses. It's a good time to uh, accumulate. Um, so let's continue on here. We have another article here. This one is on you dot today and it's titled as such record 574 million XRP moved 270 million shifted by anonymous whale in single chunk. Let's, but I told you these there are individuals who are accumulating XRP at a rapid rate, but let's read this little tidbit here. It says, whale alert, crypto tracker has detected six, six large transactions carrying Ripple affiliated XRP tokens over the past two days. One of them was a mind blowing, mind blowing one as it moved 270 million tokens in one lump sum. That is unbelievable. Nearly half of the total amount was withdrawn from the Bitstamp exchange, according to data shared by Whale Alert in, these, in the tweets. 574 million XRP transfers spotted. According to the aforementioned crypto tracking service, popular with the community, a total amount of 573.7 million XRP tokens was transacted. A sum constitutes 178,000, I mean, sorry about that, $178 million in fiat. A total of... 269,850,000 XRP was moved in a single transfer worth $88 million between two anonymous wallets. There's a lot more here, but um, if you guys want to read a little bit more, go over to you.today. Check out that article. Corridors are being set up. That's number one. Then you have whales. Um, and who knows who they are, but whales are accumulating massive amounts of XRP. You have retail accumulating XRP constantly. I think everybody knows XRP is going to take off. So they're getting prepared and they're just going to put things on the side and let them sit there for a while because this is a safe hold and it's going to take time. But you want to get in now 
at least I'm think this is the way I'm, I'm envisioning it, that there are certain businesses that understand they may not be able to get in the way that they want later. This is what they feel is their optimal price price to get in at. And um, I think it's absolutely genius to accumulate that much at such a low price, because later on, imagine all uh, XRP uh, has a, uh, um, a power volley run. These individuals are going to make a heck of a lot of money, a, a ton of money. Um, so. I think a lot of institutions are collecting behind the scenes. Um, you can obviously see that in all of these articles that are being written by so many massive amounts of XRP being accumulated. Um, so this is all very, very good activity in my humble opinion. And we just keep an eye on this. But <laughs> I know that there, there's also a lot of newcomers to XRP, not just retail, but business wise as well. So both retail and the businesses are trying. They're brand new to XRP. They didn't they didn't know about it before. Maybe they saw it on the news or something like that, set in a briefing with Ripple. And so a lot of individuals are collecting XRP right XRP right now. They and they're new to XRP. That's another thing. So they're trying to get in now. And this is like the opportunity of a lifetime. And this is happening with a lot of crypto everywhere. You know, uh, there's certain crypto that were they're still were at pretty good prices, honestly, even before the correction. But let's say like Quant, for example, is $400. Now you see Quant like is about $50, something like that today, $50, $51. Some people just can't not take that <laughs> opportunity to get some, right? Even if it returns to all-time highs, you're going to see a disgusting uh, return on investment. Then you have other uh, crypto like VeChain, for example, which is expanding so rapidly. It's mind-blowing and they have access to corridors that no one else has access to like in china so v chain can reach out to the entirety of the world right in a way that no other crypto can because no other crypto has the green light in china right so um, a lot of individuals try to get in on things like that before it goes parabolic in the next bull run um and they're going to see it i believe humbly in the future time i i, I don't say all of this is going to happen quickly but in the future time i believe that they're going to see a, a very healthy return on investment from things like v chain um, there's so many good crypto that are most of most of the good crypto, in my opinion, are all utility coins. V chain, Quant, um, Algorand, Hedera, XRP, XLM, Cello. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of others that I really, really want to put out there. You have massive blockchain projects like Cypherium. You know, even I'm still learning about Cypherium. Um, massive projects they're working with the fed i mean unbelievable so there are i think most of the projects in the future that will thrive most not all will be the utility coins that utility era is going to be massive and people will want in and as the money grows it's a strange thing that happens as the money gets bigger it seems that more people want to buy in as things get more expensive i don't it's a pride thing i guess it's sort of like um you know, people don't want to to buy something that's low price. They, they look at it as. How could I say this? Like it's, it's a lesser than. Right. I don't want this at one dollar, but, you know, you could put a, a pair of glasses, take the name off of the glasses, put them for one dollar in the store. Barely anybody wants to buy them. But if you put the label back on, it says Gucci and it's for three hundred, four hundred dollars. People will buy those glasses simply because it's, it carries like a prestige, I guess, you know, unless people know, hey, I have money, they want to wear a certain watch. So it's the same way in, in the stock market, in the crypto market, people carry themselves with pride because they hold something that's, that's worth $900 per, per uh, share, um, <laughs> $900 per coin. They carry themselves with a certain level of pride. And so as money gets bigger, more money comes into these particular coins. More money will, in my humble opinion, come into those particular stocks. Um, because they won't be looked down upon by big money people, right? And that's just the way that it goes. That's just the way that it is, unfortunately. Um, let's go here. We have another article here. This one is on Algorand. So it says, today at Napster announced its plan to launch a decentralized music first ecosystem on Algorand to empower music makers, rights holders, and fans while bringing them closer together. To learn more, download the Napster 3.0 Light Paper V1. This is a great uh, happening for Algorand. Obviously, I believe that they're going to be paying all of the different fees and stuff like that with Algo, right? Algo would be the fiat currency, the uh, cryptocurrency rail for the fiat moving across the blockchain. Um, and that's going to be, if this is successful, there will be a lot of transaction volume coming out of there. Um, so this will be good for congestion on the network, things of that nature. Um, 
a lot of money will come out of Napster. Like I said, first we have to just keep an eye on whether this is going to be successful or not because it has a lot of competition. This is not like in the past where you just had Napster and LimeWire and what's the other? There was a few other ones, but you know what I'm talking about. It's not like that anymore. Um, now you have Apple Music, which don't, by the way, don't, don't, for, don't forget, my motivational tracks are on there. I'm going to be having some podcasts released on there. So follow me on Apple Music. Follow me also on Spotify. The link is going to be down in the description, description box so you don't miss out on some good content. I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently on that podcast. It's not going to be like this show here. We're going to have a little fun over there. Um, and I'm going to talk about a lot of different crypto topics, not just like the bank coins and things. We have a lot of important things to cover. So, uh, so but yeah, you have Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, you have all of these services now. So competition is really tight. So we will see how they want to go about this. Uh, but I do think that they have an audience that they can grab because it's going to be decentralized. So that's interesting. Um, there's a lot of individuals who support decentralization. And so I think that they would jump on this. So very, very good you know, uh, uh, happenings by Algorand, for Algorand. They're continuously doing a good job. Another crypto that I expect to explode. They already had a parabolic run last year. Remember, I was telling people, Algorand's gonna explode, Algorand's gonna, you know, and I'm showing them the partnerships, I'm showing them the deals. That's incentive for, for large whales to buy in, right? And then they did, but a lot of people didn't listen. Some people did, and they saw disgusting gains from Algorand, you know, Batcoin. Batcoin went parabolic, I was telling people about Batcoin. I was telling people earlier this year, last December, about Zillica because Zillica had the metropolis. I say, hey, this is a this is a catalyst here. And then Zillica took off. Some people took some disgusting profits. Um, so I expect Algorand once again to explode. We have an article on Quant. We'll end here. And it says Quant provides blockchain interoperability uh, solutions to LAC chain, Pan Regional Blockchain Initiative in Latin America and the Caribbean that fosters financial inclusion, sustainability, and creates new efficiencies through digitalization. Do you see how far Quant is reaching into every region, Europe, Latin America? And, you know, I wouldn't put it past Quant to reach its, its arms out to America when there's regulatory clarity. I really wouldn't. They have access to so many nations, so many banks. The setup is unbelievable. And keep in mind, you have to every uh, um, you have to use utilize Q and T for every transaction. There's only 13 million, only 13 million Q and T. Now, of course, I believe like all other crypto, they break down into smaller subunits, of course. But most people are holding one solid Q and T, and there's only 13 million of them. So it doesn't take a lot for that price to skyrocket. So you have Quant that is linking everything from the legacy system to the blockchains, the new financial system. They're, they are right now, I think, at the crux of being the glue. Th don't get me wrong, there's a lot of other systems that are trying to act as, as the glue between the new financial system and the old legacy system, but they're bridge systems and that's a problem. Unfortunately, the bridges have been exploited. They've been hacked so many times. So the large business institutions and the banks, they know that. So they don't wanna use bridge systems, they wanna use um, bridge list systems and because they're much more secure. I think that makes a lot of sense in my humble opinion because you want to protect your money and Quant offers that. That's why they're everywhere. LAC chain. They're dealing with LAC chain. Then they're dealing with SIA chain, SIA partners. They're on the Digital Pound Foundation. I mean, they're all over the place. Every <laughs> it's, it's actually mind blowing what they're doing. So Everything's going very, very good with Quant. So, you know, a lot, a lot of good news today. I had a little bit of HBAR news as well, but we'll cover, we'll cover that next time. I'm not going to keep you guys here too long today. So, now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So, until next time, let's get to the money.